In a previous episode, we learned atoms are so incredibly small that if every atom in a penny was the size of a golf ball, that penny would have to be larger than the planet Mars. But if atoms are really that tiny, how were they ever discovered? Welcome to the cool thing about science. I'm Matt Parker. Now, although the discovery of the atom happened just a couple hundred years ago, people have been thinking about the possibility of individual particles composing everything in the world for thousands of years. Some of the first people to ponder these smallest pieces of matter were Greek philosophers. And one of these philosophers was Democritus. And he believed that if you took something, and we'll use a piece of aluminum foil as our example, and you tore it in half, you would get two smaller pieces of aluminum foil. But he thought if you took it and you tore it in half again, and again, and again, over and over, that eventually you would reach a point where you could no longer cut it in half. You would not have a pair of scissors or a knife sharp enough to keep going. That's beside the point, but he thought you would reach a particle that was uncuttable. So Democritus gave these teeny tiny particles the name atomos, which means uncuttable or indivisible. And this is where we get our modern word atom. Now Democritus had no evidence and he didn't perform any experiments. He and other philosophers used what's called philosophical reasoning, which means they thought about things and basically came to their own conclusion. Uh, so no one knew if what they believed was true or not. As a matter of fact, other Greek philosophers like Aristotle disagreed with the thought of atoms. They believed matter could be divided an infinite number of times. So with no evidence to support either side, the battle over whether or not atoms existed raged on for close to 2,000 years. It wasn't until the 1800s that scientists began to provide evidence that supported the existence of atoms. And one of the first scientists was actually a teacher named John Dalton who did research in his spare time. John Dalton used the idea of atoms to explain why elements always reacted in small whole number ratios to form compounds and to explain why the same elements could produce different compounds. Now this is called the law of multiple proportions and John Dalton based it on some previous laws such as Antoine Lavoisier's law of conservation of mass and the law of definite proportions that was developed by Joseph Louis Proust. For example, Dalton knew that carbon and oxygen could react to form multiple compounds and he discovered that 100 grams of carbon could react fully with either 133 grams of oxygen or 266 grams of oxygen. These amounts of oxygen reduce to a ratio of 1 to 2 and the compounds they form with carbon are today known as carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide respectively. In other words, Dalton was beginning to realize that one carbon atom could react with either one oxygen atom or two oxygen atoms. This seemed to be what the ratio was telling him. The fact that atoms exist was the only thing that allowed the ratios to make sense. So after thousands of years of simply thinking about the possibility of atoms, there was now finally some evidence that showed atoms actually do exist. This allowed Dalton to develop his atomic theory, which states the following. One, all matter is made of extremely small particles called atoms, which are indestructible. Two, each element has its own type of atom, and every atom of a given element has the same mass and properties. For example, the atoms of hydrogen are different than the atoms of oxygen. Three, Compounds are formed from two or more different atoms combining in whole number ratios, such as water, which is made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. And four, in chemical reactions, atoms are simply combined, separated, or rearranged, but they're never created or destroyed. Now, Dalton wasn't completely correct in each of his points. For example, we now know that atoms can be destroyed. That's what happens in nuclear reactions. Also, we know that every atom of a given element does not have the same mass because scientists have since discovered isotopes. But being the first person to really provide evidence for the existence of atoms, 
Dalton did a very impressive job in developing his theory. But the atomic theory doesn't stop there because as more scientists began studying the atom, they found that there are even more particles within the atom that make it up. And that's where the atomic theory really gets fun with the discovery of subatomic particles. But that's a video for another day. You see, that's the cool thing about science. In the search to better understand the world, Dalton stumbled across the basic building blocks that comprise matter, and he started a revolution among scientists that would lead to the discovery and understanding of particles far smaller than the atom. So stay curious, keep asking questions, and continue exploring the world around you. Because if you think about it, you are a collection of atoms learning about yourself. Thanks for watching.